love Makani. Um, and what I want to say about um, Makani is, when I thought about the um, sort of framing this conversation in terms of black aesthetics and a black future, the first person that came to mind around who could knock that out the box was Makani. And um, Makani's brilliant. She's been thinking about the black struggle and working on the black struggle. God, as long as I've known and we've, we've known each other like 20 years. Um, what? I mean, I, I met you when. That's enough. That's enough? <laughs> <laughs> she's always like, as soon as I try to start a she's always like, cut it, cut it, cut it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also wanted to say Happy Valentine's Day. Yes. And my mom, um, Kay, made um, little labyrinths for Valentine's Day. So see Kay and grab a gift. Um, and with that said, I'm going to turn the mic over to Makani. And now I'm going to be taking care when we do the Q&A. Hey, what's up? Y'all okay? Hey. Yes. Good, good, good. Um, this is, you know, you're so far away. I feel like it's want us to be like on the live here and talk or something. Um, so I want to, I want us to play together. Let's see, let's see if I can, I can make this work this way, huh? Um, so I've been thinking a lot about the black future. One, because I want to want to have one, personally, who like a black future. <laughs> because I want a future. Um, and then I was thinking about, you know, just how, um, how many folks don't actually put black and future together. Right? Um, that, um, it, and I've been thinking a lot about the ways in which we talk, even those of us who are progressive and political, about the prospect of the future, you know, like, I, I don't know how, you know, I'm probably one of the older people in the room, and one of the things that a lot of us say to each other is the struggle continues, um, as if it will be going on forever and, and ever. And, and so I decided I want to stop thinking about that. So part of my meditation around the black future has been around, um, who are the people who have been sort of playing with the idea of the black future as fun, as free, as liberating? So I started with my man, George Clinton, uh, from back in the day, because he definitely has been having fun and not limited by, um, you know, what, with the notion of, of black life and black struggle forever and ever. Um, you know, he definitely took the head rag off and came out in a different way. And there was a couple other people in that, and let's see if I can do this right. That's upside down. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Maybe this is up. Nope. Okay. Did y'all can see it? Let's see, maybe. So, another image that, who knows who that is? Y'all know who that is. That's me, right? <laughs> okay. Who is that? Storm. Storm. Right? And, and Storm is about a vision of a, of a kind of a future, right? You don't know, who knows the story of Storm? She's what? What, the, what, is the, what is the negative term that they call a mute? Someone with hyper skills that's scary. And in many ways, a metaphor for so much. And I love Storm not only because before I cut my hair, we had the same hair, but. Um, <laughs> But also, it's, you know, it's interesting, and many of you guys who are X-Men fans kind of know the, 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 the sort of parable that, that Stan Lee was drawn from, right? You have Professor X as, as Martin Luther King, right? You have Magneto as Malcolm X. And he was trying to tell the story about alienation and, and what the future can look like in this whole struggle. And what I loved about X-Men was that he didn't actually... The two, uh, if you ignore the movies, like the movies aren't really the comic books, right? The comic books are much better, y'all. People know y'all know. Y'all are like, my people, you know about comic books, right? But what I always thought was interesting about X-Men growing up was the idea that the two, unlike the way you grew up learning about the two struggles, they weren't pitted against each other. I mean, so here's this, this white man who kind of figured it out. Like, these are, these are two sides of, of the same coin, and that's about love. You know, mutant love, black love, you know, black people as mutants, whatever, you know, because there's ways in which the way this, this society works, many of us feel like mutants. We feel different, we feel special, we feel, and we, and in some ways we make our specialness a superpower and not 
you know, the thing that drags us down. And, and I always think that, that this is also another powerful image for me about the black future and the idea of, of us sort of overcoming and being there and also running stuff because the X-Men movie they'll never make, right, is the fact that actually Storm became the leader of the X-Men fairly early on. And that probably won't happen, but maybe, maybe. Maybe somebody will make that movie. Maybe, maybe one of y'all. Okay, let's see if we can hit the right button and... This way. Nope, this way. So, mm -hmm. you know who this is, right? Yeah. You can say it out loud. Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet, yeah, you get points, it's good. <laughs> so, I think the way she plays in the next um, <clears throat> picture is another picture of her. She also plays with this idea of, of black and future. Now, the interesting thing I think about in her, her aesthetic and her work is that oftentimes people die. I know people are familiar with the videos, but it has a lot of, of people just dropping dead. Mm -hmm. And as, as the black future, which I find is really interesting. And in many ways, it's sort of like the, the, the sort of funk, sort of aesthetic in terms of the look, but it's very sad. And it says many ways about how people feel about hope, so the difference maybe about how folks felt in the 70s about the idea of the black future, and maybe how people feel about it now, and I, and I find that sort of an interesting interesting piece. Now, where's this from? You all remember this, right? What movie That's is this? The Matrix. This is from The Matrix, that's right. Mm -hmm. and, and despite the star, this movie was really about the black future. And what was the black future like in The Matrix? Underground. <laughs> Underground. <laughs> Hunted. Yeah. It was hard. Say it again? Lustful. It was definitely lustful. That's true. It's people were kind of sweaty and getting at it and on a fairly regular basis. That's true. I forgot about that. That's true. <laughs> and it's okay that you remembered that. We love you for that. Because you can't have a black future without black lust and black love. That's important. So I shaded that. So, but what's interesting about this imagery too was that. Um, that it, and interestingly enough for me, it was one of the few mainstream Hollywood box office movies that showed black people in love with each other. Mm. Which is another sort of mm. sense of the black future. It's like what is, and I'm not saying that that is that everybody black has to be in love with somebody black. That's not what I'm saying. But the, I, the, the, there's ways in which, in the imagery, in the way the future gets presented, um, there's usually just one black person who survives. Right, and then and 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 that's the only way black people aren't radioactive because black people together it almost seems like it's, there's a law against that, right? And what's interesting about the Matrix is that you had a number of couples, a number of people who were really engaged and deeply committed to each other as part of the future, right? Um, and I, the other thing that's interesting to me about the way black future is presented is that there's always elements of the past, right? that there's ways in which it's hard to imagine. So you have, like, you have the mothership, right, which is a story about the black future, and that is, you know, people are waiting for the mothership to come back, all the original people, you know, we really aren't from this planet, you know, all the Africans, the seemingly Africans, will be <coughs> levitated up into the mothership and go back to the beautiful place where we came from. That's one story about the black future, which some people are, wa I know people waiting outside. <laughs> What's well, the mothership, right? <laughs> Some of them are in your room. And that's real. Right? It's real, right? And then, you know, and there's a way in which this whole, this also this aesthetic is kind of pimp, pimpalicious, right? It's like kind of like pimp spaceship combined. And I love that, right? Because <laughs> it's like, it's almost like the mothership is like a Cadillac. Like extra, <laughs> and there's so much, and I love, and what I love about this, I mean, this imagery is just like, I mean, I'm from Harlem, right? And you actually saw people, I, you know, I grew up in the '70s, who actually walked around dressed dressed like this in real life, just at the grocery store, <laughs> you know, getting your zigzags and stuff. So, 